Thank you. So welcome uh, to this webinar. It's the last one uh, I'm doing in uh, in the Bitcoin Security Month that we did uh, with Verify. So all the previous uh, webinars that I did this month are all on the Bitcoin YouTube Montreal YouTube channel. Uh, I'm going to put the link uh, in, the, in the chat at the end. So my name is Magic. I work at Verify and uh, we're a Bitcoin consultancy group based in Montreal. Uh, we mostly do security services, but we're also opening up a, a platform on which uh, Canadians are going to be able to buy Bitcoin through a non-custodial way. So let's jump right to it. Today, I'm going to talk about cold storage, more about the concept of it and what is it. So the current realities of Bitcoin is that a lot of people are either losing their Bitcoin or getting their Bitcoin hacked or uh, uh, stolen to either because they keep their Bitcoins on an exchange, or they don't know how to protect the uh, rightfully their keys. And the the sad reality is that between two and four millions Bitcoin are considered as gone forever. And this is pretty sad reality for those who may have like a pretty substantial sum in Bitcoins, but they they they, they lost it. And you know all the stories of people looking in a in a in a in a trash field like looking for a lost hard drive that they knew they had like a lot of bitcoins a long time ago and uh, so you don't want thing, this thing to happen to you as well so this is why, why i'm doing the presentation today and also i think it's really important that a lot of people are putting the emphasis on the fact that you might get your your bitcoin might get sto uh, stolen or hacked but I think most of the people that are losing their Bitcoin is because they actually lose it or because they don't leave the necessary information for their uh, for their family or their, their uh, friends to retrieve their Bitcoins if something bad happens to them. So it's not only the biggest factor uh, risk, the ris biggest risk is actually yourself, in my opinion. So why why does it happen? People are... We're constantly telling people like you have to increase your Bitcoin security. Don't leave your Bitcoin on exchange. We have the famous uh, models such as not your keys, not your coins, but people still keep their Bitcoin on the exchange. They don't really care. They're lazy. So it's kind of unfortunate because it's that's the only thing that you shouldn't procrastinate and do it as soon as possible. It's actually improving your personal security for your Bitcoins. So let's explore like few type of adversaries that are are against your Bitcoin. So all of these are uh, retrieved from uh, the the really uh, nice book, which is called Smart Custody. So uh, the the video uh, will be available after that. And as you can see, uh, sorry, there's a link under there, but it's currently hidden by the bar here. Uh, like giving you the link for the full book uh it's made by christopher allen he's like a really known researcher uh in cryptography and everything it's a really great book if you want to improve your security but let's just like explore three of them so you have the fact that key keys are fragile by themselves it's only a, a seed or a, a an encrypted uh file but as soon as you as you lose them while well, you use access to your bitcoin there's no 881888 bitcoin uh, help desk to call in order so they can re reverse the transaction or create you a new account. So because you're sovereign with your money, uh, this also means that you're solely responsible of all your stuff. Um, there's also the fact that you may do a, an error when doing a transaction. If you enter the wrong letters or there's a character missing, it can lead to a loss. Uh, all the, the different errors that could happen when the user creates his operation security operation system, um, hackers and uh people that may want to that are well versed in the, in the technical field are going to know what part of the process is actually the the one that is the more more prone to human errors and people are going to explode that so there's also the fact that your your uh, your wallet when it's connected to a certain server a bitcoin node in my guess uh spoof uh, it might get spooked by other servers trying to tell you like a wrong version of bitcoin and you might uh, thinking that you're operating on the bitcoin network but you're actually just being presented um, a version of the hacker that he wants you, you to do something for himself uh, one really important factor and i think that there's going to be a lot of companies and people trying to create products and services in that regards is uh, the the fact that that or being incapacitated uh, can make your bitcoin uh, 
like uh, disappear forever. Uh, Bitcoin is only like 11, 12 years old. So people don't really think about that, but there's going to be more and more stories with people uh, dying and uh, not leaving the, the appropriate information for the family in order to retrieve their funds. And I think that's going to be really important. And people don't really want to talk about this because people have a uh, trouble ta talking about their own debt and uh, making uh, their, their, their uh, testament and everything. So that's, that's a really big uh, issue as well. A big disaster can also happen. So even if you have like a well-distributed uh, system, if like a big disaster happens, such as a war, a flood, or a big fire, uh, and your, uh, your, um, your seeds, for example, are not prote well protected enough, well, uh, you lose access, access to your Bitcoin as well. You can, again, get personally attacked uh, through the network. Uh, you can be denied of uh, uh, access to your keys. For example, if you put your keys in a bank, uh, in the bank vault, and for example, there's uh, uh, there's people want it, wanting to, to block you from accessing your Bitcoin since they're at a place that you can access while you, you won't be able to access your Bitcoin as well. Uh, something similar to what I said before, in terms of user errors, there's the, 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 the fatigue process that can happen during the process of creating uh, your, your Bitcoin security solution. So people are going to be exploiting uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, but I'm just, I'm just going to mute you. So for now, uh, so it uh, doesn't disturb uh, the presentation. And there is the well-known physical theft, uh, people actually trying to steal from you either by violence or uh, like a regular theft. Some, someone knows that there you have some Bitcoins, he's looking for your private keys. He may uh, blackmail you or he can even uh, threaten your life uh, so you can give your Bitcoins. And of course, uh, if it's a question of giving out your Bitcoins or you're getting shot, you're probably going to give out your Bitcoin. So the best will be to not be in that kind of situation when you can even give this kind of information that could be retrieved by a singular um, thief. So these are all type of adversaries. They're well more described in the, the, the Smart Custody book, as I said. So I invite everybody to read on this. It's a really well-researched um, security operational book. So I recommend strongly uh, to read it. So in terms of uh, Bitcoin's uh, cold storage, why you should use it in order to protect your funds? Uh, because it's really hard to predict all the possible future threats that may happen in terms of all the different vulnerabilities happening on your uh, on uh, Bitcoin softwares, on Bitcoin hardwares, and even in the Bitcoin network as a whole. So it, when you put your, your Bitcoin in a cold storage solution, it's well, well more protected from any possible future threat that ha may happen. And also there's the fact that Bitcoin value might appreciate uh, a lot in the upcoming years. So even now, if you think, oh, well, maybe I just have one Bitcoin, uh, it's not uh, it's not worth it to actually invest a, a big sum of money in order to protect it. But while if Bitcoin goes ten, ten times higher, uh, then you you have like a, for example a one hundred thousand uh, dollars sitting in a in on your uh, on an app on your computer and you don't know if uh, it's good enough. And the same might happen with one hundred k of value going up to one million up of value for all the bitcoins you're holding right now. Uh, whatever the matter you're using. So the fact that it might appreciate uh, in the long run uh, should be considered. That's why you should consider uh, cold storage as well. Uh, it's the most secure way to keep your Bitcoins. And the fact that you can trust almost nobody, there's the famous saying in the Bitcoin world, don't trust, verify. Well, Bitcoin cold storage solution are mostly about doing it yourself and verifying everything uh, along the way. And I'm gonna talk about more about ver the verification concept uh, later. And um, th the thing is the uh, hot wallets are constantly under attack. So exchanges, uh, all custodial wallet uh, are always a, a big honeypot for hackers. So that are gonna be the, the first thing hackers are gonna look for. So you don't want your coins to be sitting on a, in a, in a in a system where it's always uh, always getting tested uh, by hackers, and if you're uh, into the the Bitcoin sovereignty uh, monetary aspect, if you have like the whole control uh, of your keys of your coins, 
it respects the Bitcoin ethos, uh, which are mostly about um, privacy, uh, sovereignty, and financial uh, prosperity. Because you you don't have uh, you you have uh, bitcoins are scarce. So all these reasons are good reasons to uh, to pursue uh, a journey in the Bitcoin cold storage solution world. But uh, either of these uh, are 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 really good reasons to uh, to do it. So who is it intended for? Like a real Bitcoin cold storage solution? Um, it's mostly for personal storage, uh, large amounts of money. I said $1,100, but it may be a little bit less. But as I said before, because Bitcoin might appreciate a lot fast, uh, that $100,000 might become a million really soon. So it's for individuals that want to store Bitcoin the right way. Uh, mostly uh, mostly for long-term storage, so it's not for trading, it's not for people that want to be able to access them easily because if you have, uh, if you have uh, the, the possibility of accessing your Bitcoin the, really easily, it means that they're really, uh, they're more uh, easy to, to get from a malevolent uh, person as well. So uh, it means that in the Bitcoin cold storage solution, it shouldn't be easy even for you to access your Bitcoin, so uh, that that joins the the, the the second point, which are that you shouldn't access them uh, frequently. And there's the concept of hodling, the famous uh, uh, the famous meme of Bitcoin that you hold all for life. You're you're holding your Bitcoin for a really long term. You don't really think about uh, its current um, volatile price in uh, in USD dollar terms. Um, one thing I wanted to mention, because uh, some people may prefer that type of solutions. If, uh, so there's a lot of companies out there offering custodial solution, which means that they're going to keep the Bitcoins for you in a cold storage way. But uh, of course, they're really secure. They have uh, really advanced security measures. They have security experts, um, cryptographer, uh, cryptographers, etc. So it's a good solution when it comes to security. And a lot of investors in the end are, are not going to be pursuing uh, like a self-sovereign storage solutions for them because they're not going to feel comfortable. They don't, they're not really technical, so they're going to go with a custodial solution. So it's, it's of course, it's secure, but the, the, the drawbacks are, of that, it's that uh, it's, it's going to be less private because the company is going to be, uh, are going to be, uh, um, they're going to know about your funds and it's less sovereign because there's going to be still uh, uh, you're still going to rely on an external source or party to protect your Bitcoin. So you have the same kind of uh, threats that may come uh, from holding regular cash in a bank. So uh, it's a, really a question of trade offs uh, here. There is like two companies. I just put it as an example. There's example pretty a uh, big company and there's also Knox, which is a Mon uh, Montreal based company. They have raised also a few millions uh, for their solutions and they're offering a really advanced um, a cold storage solution for individuals, but also also uh, institution that are not, uh, that are obliged by law to keep their, their funds in, a, in, a, in this type of solution. And uh, for those who want to learn more how these companies work and how their system, uh, uh, how they operate their system and everything, uh, Knox has a really nice blog and they explain everything about custody, about managing risk, etc. So I put the link here too for those who want to dive in more about that. So why storing your coin online is bad for example on exchanges on uh, uh, custodial wallets etc because you're always going to get your identity spoofed so for example when you're connecting your wallet to uh, your ledger live wallet to uh, the ledger live platform um, there's a connection that's going to be made and you're going to be sharing your xpod to the company and because of that uh, the ledger live platform they don't they they sold you a hardware device but they also now own all the information about your addresses and uh, and the, the the transaction that you'll be doing with that wallet so uh, that identity is also vulnerable to be hacked or or uh, stolen by other parties but ledger life you, you don't know if they actually may be selling that information to blockchain analysis companies so you're giving out your identity that way when you're using a, a, a 
that type of service. Um, the fact that the network can read, they can associate, triangulate uh, your IP, IP address with your Bitcoin activity. So someone, if re re someone really wants to, 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 uh, to target you in particular, uh, they could do it in some way. And it's, it's not that hard to find a physical address from an IP address. So it's also constantly under attack. So it's more, much more dangerous. And there can, there's not only the, the hackers that external hackers that may happen, but also uh, internal thefts for coming from the company, someone uh, fleeing with all the, the funds uh, for whatever reason, for because they want to get a revenge of, of their CEO because they didn't get a promotion or simply because that was their plan since the beginning. And there's also the fact that the, the funds can be seized. So the FBI knocks on the door of Coinbase. They, they say, okay, shut it down. There's nobody getting your, their Bitcoins out of the platform. Well, Coinbase has no choice but to comply because they're a company and they're registers. And if not, they're going to jail. So the fact that your Bitcoins are not really there since you don't control your keys, everything can be seized as and is not under your own control. So uh, I'm really, because the cold search um, solution, it's a really complicated thing. So I'm just gonna go quickly over a few key concepts. So the most important aspect of cold storage solution, it's in the term itself, uh, which is cold. So keys have to be generated and kept offline for the whole um, lifespan of your cold storage solution in order it to be called a cold storage solution. So for example, if you have generated your keys, on a, a certain laptop dedicated only for the generation of your keys and you have never uh, plugged this computer before uh, to the internet, it's gonna be considered as a cold storage solution until you, you even if you wipe out the device clean after that and you, and you, uh, and you plug it to the internet, the, the, the same computer that you use to generate your keys, well, some may consider that it's not it will not be a cold storage solution anymore because there's a possibility that there's some traces left some bits of information on on the hardware itself that could um, give some information about how your keys were uh, were generated etc cetera, etc cetera. so as soon as the device that was generating your keys goes online it's not considered as a cold storage solution anymore so that's really the most important concept so adding to that, once you have that uh, that that notion that uh, as that your keys have to be kept offline, not connected to any type of network, you can add on uh, additional concept on top of this uh, to complete your cold storage solution. And there's no um, there's no plug and play cold storage solution for everybody because it's really dependent on your own personal situation, the, the how much access you have to um uh to to uh, certain type of hardware uh, how much expertise you have in regards of operational system etc so um there's no one solution for all but uh, i'm gonna talk a little bit about everything so you can know what is important for you or what might might not be so one of the really important concept that people bring a lot in a cold storage solution is the concept of air gap and non backdoor hardware uh, as some of you may know, uh, especially those more geeky uh, of you, that all of our hardware, if you're using like a Windows, Mac, uh, there's backdoor, so-called backdoors inside uh, the softwares and the firmwares of all of the stuff. So it means that the company or even um, or even authorities such as uh, well, higher authorities, uh, governmental authorities can access your computer without your consent. Um, and they can do that because there's a piece of code, there's a piece of something inside your, your computer that let them do it without your permission. And so that's, it's really hard to find a non-backdoor hardware, but a lot of peop people that want to construct a Bitcoin cold storage solution want to use that high type of hardware because they, want, they don't want someone having the, the possibility of accessing uh, the cache memory of or whatever that could help them uh, steal the Bitcoins. And that and the, there's a, the, the concept also of quarantine hardware that, that is also uh, really linked to the fact of it being it cold. So once you use a certain hardware, 
for key generation of, of key management, you shouldn't connect it to a computer again. It's on quarantine forever. And that's it, that's all. Unless, of course, if you change the set of keys and you do a new new cold storage solution uh, with their own set of keys, well, then you can use that hardware again. You can unquarantine it. But um, uh, until your Bitcoins are kept on the, the set of keys that you have generated on the hardware, it shouldn't get uh, be plugged to the internet. And of course, uh, all these systems are going to be Linux-based because it's much more simpler and safer. And uh, there's much uh, much more verif verifiability possible with that kind of operational system uh, than Windows or uh, Mac OS, for example. Then there's the concept of software and ver firmware verification. So all the the all the the different parts of the solution that you're going to be using, all the softwares, all the wallets, uh, whatever wallets you choose in order to to store your Bitcoin, uh, e even like the 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 entropy that is generated, everything should be verified and built from source. Um, and that is really important because someone may have put like a piece of malware inside uh, a certain, it, it couldn't be visible for the human eye because you have to verify it crypt cryptographically that nothing was changed along the way. And that is possible with uh, uh, basically uh, really known tools such as PGP. So every piece of software, especially in the Bitcoin world, is going to be uh, associated with the with the PGP key. So you can be sure that it hacked it, you can it was uh, it wasn't corrupted along the way. So that that is really important as well. Uh, another really interesting concept uh, and that may seem a little bit uh, backward but there's the concept of entropy. So what is entropy? It's really the randomness that creates your 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 private keys. Uh, the, well, the, the measure of uh, randomness used to create your private keys. And if someone uh, corrupted the entropy in your certain wallet, uh, he can then afterwards see how uh, the, they were generated because he spooked the, 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 uh, the, the entropy. So, most most of the cold storage solution, even really advanced one, they're gonna use uh, simple tools such as dices in order to generate their own entropy because they won't trust the software. So the less software you have to trust, the better it is. And even really advanced like a custodial solution that I know uh, that have been talking with people, they use they're gonna use dices simply in order to generate uh, the entropy needed to generate the keys. So it's impossible to put a piece of malware in a dice and like uh, play with the the unless you have uh, uh, you have like fake dice, but you should be uh, using uh, real dice the dices. So that that is really also a really interesting uh, concept inside the uh, with the Bitcoin code storage solution. And one of uh, the last thing that is really interesting that we have been talking uh, with one of. Uh, the, the the persons that are uh, present today at the beginning of the presentation is the concept of multi signature scheme so a multi signature scheme it's um, it, it's a feature permitted by the uh, the bitcoin protocol uh, with the current uh, digital signature algorithm which is called ecdsa so for now there's a possibility to create up to 15 signatories and you can choose the number of signatures from the 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 generated signatories and you're creating a kind of contract saying that if certain conditions are not met, you cannot sp spend a certain UTXO. So, for example, you can create a multi signatures, a multi signature scheme uh, of two out of three. So you created three seeds uh, that are that are possible to sign with, but you only need two out of the three uh, in order to be. Uh, 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 in order for a transaction to be valid. And for now, because of uh, ECDC, you can do up to 15. So you can do any type of scenario on, uh, up to 15. So you can do set seven out of uh, 11, you can do three out of four, you can do five out of five. Uh, really, it's your choice. But it's really important in that regard that often people are gonna think, okay, well, I'm just gonna create as much as possible. Uh, keys so I can all distribute this uh, geographically, uh, but so, sometimes complexity doesn't really mean security. And if you have too much 
information to be uh, to be kept secure and uh, and you have to verify and you you have to be able to make sure that it hasn't been compromised it makes the task much more harder uh, cumbersome and uh, potentially really um, uh, really costful so often enough two out of uh, a multi signature scheme two out of three is much more than enough because even then you have the possibility of choosing how you distribute the keys themselves right so there's a difference and in for example having a uh, a key uh, at your house a key at your uh, cottage house and a key on the bank vault for example and there's a difference if you have the means to do it for example to distribute the keys on three different continents right in different jurisdiction for example so uh just with the the the, the two out of three uh type of scenario you can you have an infinity of possibilities because you each of the keys can be protected in another way etc so you shouldn't go uh too complicated with the the multi-signature scheme in itself two out of three is pretty much enough and when you, you when you're gonna do more it's more in the in the enterprise situation when you're gonna have uh, a system of control of keys and a much more um, um uh, procedures involved in the thing but for an individual a two out of three is uh, more than enough in my opinion and uh, the clients we uh, we we help to create the, these type of solutions always choose the two out of three uh, from the the others because it's uh, it's more than enough uh, in most cases uh, there's some risk involved in multi-signature schemes that, that are that can be even more dangerous than not having one so for example the with the current um way a multi-signature scheme is created on the bitcoin network it's uh it's really bad for privacy because the transaction when you're going to be spending it it's going to be clear that there was a multi-signature scheme involved uh, uh in the, with the transaction and so as i said before for now you can do up to 15 signatories but there's a uh, there's a Schnorr signatures, which is a proposed BIP and a long time software, uh, this uh, long time discussed software in the Bitcoin um, and Bitcoin Core uh, through the Bitcoin Core developers. Uh, so with that new software that may be uh, happening in two three years, uh, you're not going to be seeing the the multi signature scheme uh, on the network. So that's a good thing for privacy, and you're going to be also uh, able to create as much as signatories as as you want um, but coming back to the risk you have the the fact that it, some signatories might collude between themselves so for if you for example have intended to distribute your keys to your friend and uh, then your friend wants to want to steal from you because you you had a bad night sometimes with them and they want to make you stress or they want to do a bad joke to you um they they can collude together and and uh and uh and uh, steal your bitcoins because uh they, they're gonna be they're gonna have the access to do it so often enough uh, sometimes depending on the situation we're gonna say okay well if you give that 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 person a key well maybe don't tell that person that the other person uh, this this other person has one as well so it really depends on how much trust you have to your to the the people you distribute your keys or even if you choose to distribute it to people and not simply to locations that you control solely and there's the problem of signatory reliability so if the person isn't technical enough and you and for example it's your brother it's your sister and you said okay please keep that piece of paper 12 or 12, 12, 24 words uh well uh, somewhere but they go oh, yeah okay it's fine it's fine and finally they, they 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 lose it or they they they, they got to get it stolen as well so you can rely always on other people and but there's also the fact that you're you're putting your the the people that you're giving the the key are you putting them at risk because uh if someone knows that you have the there's a the distribution of uh keys uh, through a multi-signature keys being ha happening uh someone can kidnap your sister or your brother and say well i know they have a key just give me the second one um and uh, uh i will i will do no harm to to your brother or sister so that's a that's a risk as well and of course kidnapping and all that stuff so 
when you're doing a multi-signature scheme, you have to think about all these scenarios uh, in order for you to, to, be, to be it working because it's really important. Uh, another really, uh, that's a really far-fetched, I would say, um, concept of cold storage key uh, solutions. But of course, uh, when companies are creating a cold storage solution like that, uh, they will be employing uh, the, the concept of a Faraday cage. So what is a Faraday cage? It's basically a place, a safe place where no outside signals can penetrate the, the premise and no information can enter or excite, uh, excite the, uh, the, the, the so-called Faraday cage. So there's really advanced ways in which you can steal information. Um, so uh, I won't go into details, but for example, I have a friend that is a white hacker and he has been telling me that some people have been able to analyze what, were, what some people were seeing in a room by simply pointing a laser in a room and by analyzing the fluctuating pixels uh, of the pixels because the 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 uh, the sound waves of our, the voice were hitting uh, the the that particular point on the laser just because of that little uh, changement fluctuation in the 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 colors of the pixel they were able for example to analyze what people were saying right so and there's tons of this kind of James Bond kind of uh uh attacks or uh espionage even uh, a film so uh if you want to make sure that no information is going to get leaked when you're going to be generating your keys that the best is, is to do it in an environment where you know nobody can see you nobody can listen to you etc etc et because even you have the most um advanced hardware the most you have verified all your software uh, and but just when you're typing, for example, your your seed or whatever, uh, somebody uh, somebody hears you, no matter how uh, how advanced is your system, because they they heard you, they saw you, um, they saw your your seed. Well, uh, you're gonna get uh, at, attacked that way as well. So there's different kind of threats. Uh, so visual side, acoustic side, somebody can listen how you tape tape something on your computer someone can listen to radio waves someone can uh, even uh, there are some types of hacks where because your computers emit a certain uh, heat when processing a certain type of information you could also infer some information from that so there's tons of attacks like these so it's just a concept of well if you create your keys just do it in a safe place so what are the challenges and costs well it's it's pretty heavy cumbersome process of going out to these different scenarios and and uh, and uh, especially if you're not if you're not technical enough uh, to know the the trade-offs of each one of them so it takes time it takes a little bit of investment on your part uh, because you're going to be having have to buy some hardware and maybe some uh, hire some ex an external firm to help you to make sure that you're doing everything uh, well and um, one of the bad thing too is that there's no you know, currently there's really uh, not that much of a good software and products uh, offering these kinds of solutions um as uh, when i mean uh, these kinds of solution i'm, I'm talking about cold uh, sovereign cold storage solution of course the companies that are offering custodial services uh, there's no much ux interface involved in the thing there's it's just like a service but when someone wants to do it itself, uh, so, uh, by themselves, uh, the interface and everything uh, is pretty bad. You're gonna be ha you're gonna have to use like the common line, etc. So there's that concept as well. So for those who wanna pursue further um, the concept of Bitcoin co Bitcoin closer solution, I recommend the lecture of Glacier Protocol. Uh, it goes into like basically gives you a tutorial on how to do it exactly and gives you a lot of um, got a lot of advice in that regards so uh, we're pretty much done for the presentation so uh, thank you really much and um, for those who are here for the first time um, uh, you can follow us on twitter on facebook on linkedin we do a lot of stuff like this um, it was kind of simple today uh, but uh, we also go uh, more into details when talking about the specific specific software or specific type of hardware 
Uh, and you can also follow me on Twitter if you want. So this presentation today concludes the security month that I have been doing uh, over the past month. Um, and it, it was like the concept of being your own Bitcoin bank. So uh, on the Bitcoin YouTube, uh, Bitcoin YouTube channel, Montreal YouTube channel, there is uh, already the video of choose the right Bitcoin wallet, run your own full Bitcoin node and stay confidential with your Bitcoin. So today was like a and the compensation of everything that I was talking about um, for the past week. So thank you very much. And uh, I'll be happy to take some questions if there are any or discuss. Uh, I know that we uh, stopped our conversation, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Seufer. So if you want to uh, talk, give comments or have questions, uh, don't hesitate, please. Great info so far. Thanks, man. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Well, I think uh, it was mostly uh, if you have been to Honey Badger, that's uh, that was mostly basic for you. But uh, uh, yeah. it's good reminders. Good you know, reminders. like we were talking about earlier, um, kind of where we are, multi sig and things to probably the most interesting thing to me as just a normie average Joe Hodler guy. Um, have, currently. have you tried the creating your own um, multi-signature scheme or? A... You know, I haven't yet, um, mainly out of laziness. I really need to get onto Caravan. Um, I, I, I think, you know, like where I was kind of referring to earlier, mm -hmm. it's a, kind of a weird place right now for technical people with multi-sig in, in that, you know, we're still waiting for things that smart people put together and collaborate with other smart people on, you know? Yeah. Uh, and so we're kind of caught in this, like, this period of time where it feels like I'm, like, appealing to authority, right? Like, tell me how to use multi-sig and what the best scheme is. Please, somebody smart, tell me. <laughs> and obviously, obviously, we both know that's not the way to, to Bitcoin. So, because it's you so know, personal. And then it's, and then, go ahead. Because I think it's so personal. It's like, how can you create a, a universal Bitcoin cold storage solution? Or how can you create a universal um, uh, universal um, ways to transmit your Bitcoins to your here when you die, right? So it's it's so um, it's 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 as if like there should be a service associated with your keys and uh, Bitcoin management and not just products, right? Um, and it's I have the impression that like Bitcoin banks are going to be a thing in the future while well, it's already happening, right? With the exchanges, yeah. with, uh, uh, with the custodial solution, because a lot of people just don't care. They want to see their Bitcoin appreciate in price and that's the only thing they care, right? So, Right. Yeah, you know, like I, I feel like the analogy I want to use right now is, is that, you know, we we kind of figured out over the last few years that how do you, how, how do you secure a, a single key, right? You, you generate it offline, you use a hardware wallet or you air gap some kind of a laptop or whatever. Right. And then you back it up with steel or some other thing, right? Your, your 24 word seed. Um, the passphrase thing came along, you know, it just, we, that's the third. Mm -hmm way to secure uh, for an average person to secure a single key and that's just accepted i guess people like me kind of are like dude i want i want to be a little bit more secure but, <laughs> but we just feel like it's not we're not ready for it yet and it's just too early have you heard of um, bip 119 no what is 119 so uh it's a, it's a thing uh that J Jeremy uh, Robin what is working on for the last years, and uh, it's like a, it's basically smart contracts on Bitcoin, and there's gonna be like the possibility of like, adding so much conditions in in which your Bitcoins are gonna be able to be spent. So I, so I think in the future there's gonna be some UX that you're gonna be able to easily and simply add conditions for your UTXOs in order to be spent. So if someone tries to uh, to steal them all, 
well if you have put like a certain time lock or a, or mm. a certain conditions such as like really meaningful conditions um i think it's going to be a combination of that and some kind of multi-signature like it's hard to say what's going to mm. come out out of all of this and you also have for example ck bunker which is on another uh i don't know if you saw that ck bunker yeah it's a cold uh, coin kite thing right yeah um, yeah 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 that's that's i i have mess well i haven't touched it at all i've, I've read a little bit about it and i i think um you bringing that up makes me think a little bit about hermit which is also the unchained i mean that's like the super deep down like sharding your keys in a bunch of different ways but yeah, yeah. Uh, i guess back to back to what you're saying um I, I i know there's some some big stuff coming out and um some exciting stuff so, and time log verify is really kind of mind-blowing and mm -hmm. um, interesting to think about too but um yeah yeah I don't think you're an army. I saw your uh, Bitcoin uh, uh, chancellor of banks uh, being on the brink of uh, <laughs> uh, bailout. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, well, I, uh, I got seventy percent off. What was that? Links? Is it the um, Links Art Bitcoin Art or whatever? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, it was really nice to meet you. And uh, if you're ever uh, in Montreal uh please tell me i will go uh show you around yeah uh, definitely i um actually I, my brother-in-law he married a gal an iranian canadian um from montreal oh yeah that's yeah. interesting yeah yeah so he lives up and we need to get up there and see him and you know like i said i not to name drop but i know some of the bull bitcoin people and you know yeah, just some cool people that i met met from uh riga and stuff like that well, we are really uh, friends with Bull uh, Bitcoin. We're actually building products and uh, and uh, service together, and we have been organizing like the Bitcoin Montreal meetup. But uh, now it's kind of boring to do just webinars, you know, uh, because uh, it was it's so so much fun like doing the Bitcoin meetups in real life. There's always like sixty to eighty people in the meetups in Montreal. Like there's a really big community, and like Bitcoin cool. maximalists, you know, and that and that's yeah. You know blockchain you know. <laughs> yeah we, we have a also actually we've had some famous bitcoiners come and visit us up here um or down from you guys mm -hmm. and we have a pretty good pretty good community um of like you know how we maybe four or five years ago meetups were anything if you knew the term digital money you were invited and stuff right and then, of course, we got infected with a bunch of and bullshit. So I was away from this for a while. But actually, I've been going back to them a lot lately in the last six months to a year because people are coming to term maximalism. So, all right, man. Hey, great talking to you. Say hi to everybody in O Canada. Of course. Thank you. Thank you. See you, uh, see you uh, anytime soon. Yes, it's, yeah, thanks so much for your work. Bye-bye, thank you. It's a pleasure.